sentence has two essential parts, a subject and a verb. What's a subject? It's who or what the sentence is about. And a verb tells us what the subject is doing or what is being done to the subject. So in our simple example here, identifying the subject as the dog and the verb ate, the dog ate my homework. So we know who is doing the action, performing the action in the sentence, and what they are doing. All right, next part, subject-verb agreement. Subjects and verbs are linked and must match according to person. Well, what is that? Oh, well, there's first person. So here's first person subject verb agreement, and you're going to recognize this. I am second, second person, you are, third would be she is. So that's subject verb agreement according to person. The next part is subject verb agreement according to number, singular or plural, and the last one is tense, subjects and verb, and that's degree in tense. And we have to look at the context of the sentence. So we need to find clues to tell us if it's past, present, or future for our verb tense. So let's look at this wonderful table. Subjects on the left, verbs on the right. Notice how this is, they must agree, I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, they are. And uh, by, you'll, you'll recognize by sound, I am, that that sounds correct. You are, that sounds good. You wouldn't say you am or they is. So um, most of you, it's pretty easy to recognize. If it's not as easy to recognize, definitely study this chart because it'll make the test go much more smoothly, be easier to recognize these pairs. So um, let's go on to subject verb agreement and what does that have to do with prepositional phrases? So let's talk about that. What is a preposition? It's a word that gives physical location, time, direction, or position. So here's some examples, with, above, below. These are all positions. And then to do with time would be Let's see, upon, once upon a time. Um, let's keep going. What is a prepositional phrase? A prepositional phrase is a pair of a preposition and a noun. So let's look at some of those. On the refrigerator, here's our preposition, and here's our noun, the refrigerator. With four children. Below sea level, these prepositional phrases. Now, why is this important? Because we're in subject verb agreement. Well, the really cool thing about prepositional phrases is they never count as a subject. So, the really great trick is that you can always eliminate the prepositional phrase when you are deciding which verb goes with the subject. So, the first thing is let's try this example. The dog with six puppies is or are eating my homework. Well, it could be a little confusing to pick your subject, but if you know you can eliminate a prepositional phrase, it makes it much easier. The dog is eating my homework versus the dog are eating my homework. Well, this is a singular subject. So the dog is eating my homework. Well, that sounds much smoother, and that's the correct answer. The dog is eating my homework. Let's try another example. The way of all samurai is a strict path or the way of all samurai are a strict path. This could be difficult to tell what your subject is, but because you know you can eliminate the prepositional phrase, you can just jump here and find out, well, this, this right here is the subject and it's singular. The way is a strict path versus the way are a strict path. This one reads much more smoothly and that is the correct answer. The way is a strict path. Finally, the PTA through generous donations is or are building a new school building. Well, now you've got the hang of it. You know you get rid of this. And so you have here the correct answer. The PTA is building a new school building. All right, let's try another one. This one is a, this next one is a really good little test question. The final minute of the race, the last of many grueling minutes, 
is, was, or were a time when I felt my resolve was about to break. So the first step, because on the test you don't know what you are being, what exact grammar rule you're being tested on, so what you can do is examine the underlying words to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. So we notice here that the underlying words are different forms of the same verb. So we need to figure out subject verb agreement. Luckily, we've got this example. So identify the subject noun linked to the verbs in question. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's start from the beginning of the sentence. The final minute of the race. Well, that simplifies things. And plus, we have that trick where we can eliminate the prepositional phrase. So let's do that. It makes our sentence so much simpler. The final minute is, was, or were a time when I felt my resolve was about to break. So now we can look at whether the subject is singular or plural. And we know there's only one minute, so it must be singular. That allows us to eliminate the plural verb there, were. And now we're just down to is versus was. Well, we need a clue in the sentence to figure out what the verb tense is. And we find that it's in the past tense right there, when I felt my resolve was about to break. So we choose the singular past tense verb, or in other words, you just read it. The final minute is a time when I felt my resolve was about to break, or the final minute was a time when I felt my resolve was about to break. And let's just rewrite that. Reads much smoother. The final minute of the race was a time when I felt my resolve was about to break. So let's recap. Subject verb agreement. Subjects and verbs are linked and must match according to person, number, singular or plural, and tense. And remember, you can ignore prepositional phrases when you're identifying the subject. So with this one, the dog with six puppies is or are eating my homework. Remember that. It's pretty handy to ignore that prepositional phrase. The dog is eating my homework.